What's up all my folks out in YouTube land? This is Daryl, also known as The Finisher. This is gonna be my video series. So anytime you guys see the whiteboard in the background, you know it's gonna be the whiteboard breakdown, okay? Well, we're gonna take a topic, we're gonna break it down. It's gonna be different topics. Sometimes it's gonna be about business, it's gonna be about work, it's gonna be about, who knows? I mean, whatever we're discussing at the time, you know, whatever's going on. So, but today the topic is gonna be, should you quit your job to start a service business? Now, there is one rule with the finisher when it comes to the whiteboard breakdown, okay? You can't lie to yourself. Here, don't lie to yourself because the only way we're gonna grow, we're gonna be successful, we're gonna actually like give ourselves room for improvement or anything is if we're truthful with ourselves, all right? So, now on this topic, I have five things that I think will help you to make a decision, help you to, just five things for you to consider before you stop working, before you quit your job to start your business, all right? So let's go on to number one. All right, number one, do you have any money? Now, I know a lot of you guys have been told that you can just, man, you start this business, you do this thing over here, you do this thing over there, you'll have money on day one, and you'll, you can just quit your job now, you can start. Look, that might be the case, but it's not, the rule it's not the rule by any means matter of fact the vast majority of us that start in service businesses are going to struggle you're just going to struggle you're going to struggle in the beginning so you need to have money to back whatever you're doing you know you had money to just pay your bills you know money to pay for if something happens then you start now the first day you go out and get a flat tire then what are you gonna do like you know you have to have money to help get things going also the beginning process when it comes to everything from getting leads to tools that you might need things that come up on jobs i had plenty of jobs where i go in and it starts out that it's a basic job but then it ends up being something else and i might have to fund a certain part of that project before i get to the end i mean you have to have money you have to have some kind of money at least like i said if nothing else just money to pay your bills until you get this thing going in a way where you're never gonna be able to guarantee money but you can you can almost guarantee it you know what i mean like you can you can get to that point where it's it's gonna come in on a regular basis and you won't have to have those concerns anymore um so something to consider do you have any money in the bank also when we're talking about money you also have to say is did you have somebody to help support you so i had my wife was my support system i mean she held me down you know so even though the money she brought in did wasn't enough to pay all the bills it was still enough to help supplement if I had a bad month. Now, I ended up not needing her to do that. I was able to pay what I need to pay, but barely. There was some months that, but she did, I did know that if, if I couldn't do that, that she would be able to help contribute to, to me. So that's another thing to consider. Number two, how are you going to get jobs? Now, everybody will tell you, hey, when you start, Man, you go knock on doors and, and you tell everybody in your family. Well, I, I don't know. Everybody's family doesn't have money. So, I, you know, when people out, I hear people say that, tell everybody about at your job. I'm, I'm, if I'm working at the grocery store, I might not have any, any uh, people that have any money that work around me either. So it's not always gonna work. How do you plan on getting jobs? Maybe you're one of the, the like a very fortunate person that has something built in that you were you were doing it part time for a long time. You already have a customer base built in. I didn't have that. I'm, you know, I know when I started, it was kind of out of necessity and a necessity of my own doing. It's, it has nothing to do with anybody else. But I did quit my job maybe two months after I started the business because it was kind of a do or die thing for me. So I had to get it. It was time for me to get it in. But that's not the case for everybody. So if you don't have to, you know, you, you need to figure out before you do that, how you're gonna get jobs. Are you gonna go with lead generation? Well, that costs money, which takes us back to number one. Do you have any money? You know, if that's your plan, that's fine. But you know, that's also gonna take away from the money that you get from having to pay for the leads. So you need to be prepared for all of that. Also, some of the jobs you're gonna get in the beginning, you have to make a decision on whether, whether are you gonna take top dollar? Are you gonna try to do it like a lot of people say and you know only go for the jobs where you're getting the top 10% or you know, you're getting, or you're just gonna like lower that price and, 
and take what you can get at the time, which might result in you not having enough money. I mean, there's a lot of factors, unless you have a built-in way to get them or unless you already have it locked in, something to consider. Number three, what is your skill level? Okay, now what I'm not a proponent of, I don't believe that you should just be taking jobs just because they pay and you're going to people's houses just trying to learn while you're in there and you're taking a job just say you're doing a drywall repair job and it's taking you uh two days to do something that should have took three hours you know i don't believe and, and it still looks like trash when you're finished i i don't think that that should be the case uh especially these times people working hard for their money man they don't need you to come in there and mess up stuff in their house so are you ready to go deliver the kind of work that people are looking for i look i worked when I tell you I, I'm a, I am the worker, you know what I mean? Like I am the embodiment of a worker. I worked, I'd done over 20 jobs. I've had some for a very long time, worked 14 years at one job. I've worked part-time, worked two jobs at a time. I've, I've done it all. And I understand how it is to work hard for your money. You can't go and take people's money and do trash work. That This whole, that, that, that's what here, you'll see branded everywhere handyman 2.0 well this is the next level we're not doing trash work over here so i believe that you need to know your skill level and don't lie to yourself about it do you do you know what you're doing do you know how to repair that drywall to where it's going to be perfect do you know how to do that trim to where it's going to be just the scene it's going to be seamless like do you know what you're doing if not you need to step the game up put some work in and figure out how you're gonna get to practice. And I don't believe in necessarily you gotta go do something for 10 years and you gotta go take a, class, a bunch of classes to learn how to do something. I'm of the thing where you can, you can learn how to do things on your own. You can teach yourself, you can watch videos, you can practice. There's ways you can find, you can find ways to practice on your own without having the, somebody be able to have to sit there and take you step through step through step on how to do something. I'm self-taught, but it's been a lot of practice involved. What are you willing to do? It might not be going and getting a job with somebody. It might be one of the things I did. Say for instance, this just for instance, I didn't know how to, I do how to do trim work, but I didn't know how to uh, coat. I didn't know how to coat, right? So what did I do? I went and bought trim from Lowe's. Like you can go to Lowe's and they'll sell you a broken piece of trim for a dollar. I mean, they just trying to get rid of it. Nobody wants a broken piece of crown or baseboard or something like that, right? Or, or chair rail. I would go buy this trim, this broken trim, bring it home, and I would just get up early and just get my coping saw, cut an angle, and just cope. Cut that one off, cope again. Cut it off, cope again. And do it again and again and again. It, you know, it, that's school, that's training. Are you willing to do that? So no, I didn't have jobs where I was, somebody was teaching me how to do crown, but, or teaching me how to cope in the secrets and the this and that. No, I did it and I said, ah, oh, this is not, this doesn't work. Let me do it this way. Let me do it this way. Let me do it this way. I did it and did it and did it until I perfected it. So by the time I took a crown molding job, I went in somebody's house. You would have never knew. I, I think I have a picture of it on my Facebook page. You would have never knew it was my first time doing crown the way it looked, the way it came out, okay? So I'm not saying that you have to have 30 years of experience, but you can't go take people's hard-earned money and have and give them work that looks like trash. So you need to know what your skill level is before you get out here doing trash work, for real. Number four, what is your knowledge of your industry? What I mean by that is, I know when I first started, right? And I was doing, like I said, your handyman, type work, remodel type work, or small remodel type work. I just said, I'm gonna do it in the evenings, right? I just like everybody says, just do it on the evenings and the weekends. Well, a lot of the work that I do is interior work, right? Well, one thing I figured out quick is, well, man, <laughs> you're working inside people's houses. People don't really want you there on the evenings and on the weekends, you know? I mean, it's one thing is different, like if you're doing appliance repair, or uh, or a plumber or something like that, where people are people will call you for emergencies. So it doesn't matter. They don't care. They don't care if you come in there at two in the morning. They want it done because they have this problem that they need to fix. Some jobs are more leisure things that 
they want you to do it, but they don't want their lives overly inconvenienced. Kind of get it. Like I told you, I'm a worker, man. So I get working and working and working all week. And then you finally get your weekend. And now you got somebody banging with a hammer all weekend. No, sometimes they just, they, they don't. So I realized quick, they didn't want me there. So this part-time night and weekend thing is not really going to work well for me. So I, I needed to figure out a way to be there during the day when people wanted me there. Do you know your industry? You need to study your industry. You need to study what the people want. You need to know what are the problems out there? What are the biggest problems? If you're, like I said, if you're an electrician, if you're a plumber, what are the biggest problems that are people having nowadays? And, and make yourself, make sure your skill level is up in those areas. You might not be the man in every, in every area, but you need to know the ones that we're going to get you the most work. So you need to understand your industry. You need to soak in every bit of information you can about your industry before you just jump into it. Find out that the way you think things uh, are working right now ain't is, is, is not the case, right? So that's number four. All right, y'all. We're at number five. What is your level of ambition? Now, when I'm saying don't lie to yourself, I, this, this is what I'm talking about right here. Do not lie to yourself. What's your level of ambition? When you're becoming self-employed, you're starting a business. If you think that you're gonna start self, you're just gonna start a business and the idea is that, I have heard plenty of people say they wanna be able to go to lunch when they feel like it and they wanna be able to take days off when they feel like it. Or what about the opposite? When, when things get busy, you know, like if you had a job and things get really busy and you're like, and they come and ask you, you know, well, can you stay late today? You could be like, no, no, I can't do that. No, no, I'm just, I'm going home for the day. You could do that at a job, but if it's your business, can you do that? I work 12 hours a day, right? Because I had to get this extra work. I had to get it done today because I can't do it tomorrow because I got something else scheduled for tomorrow. So the work had to get done today. So I had to put in the 12 hour day. But then when I get home, I still got phone calls to make, right? I might have estimates to do. Um, the, the amount of hours that you're gonna put in to starting up your own business, it, it's just, it doesn't compare to working a job. It, it's not even close. The idea of an eight hour day of work was a creation by like for by like plant and manufacturers. The reality is, is that people who were self-employed, there was no such thing as eight hour day. People would go to farms and just work until the work was done. I mean, and that's just what it was. You work until the work is done. So are you at that level? Are you ambitious enough? Or have you taken on the mind frame of the job economy that says, eight hours is what you should work and that's it and then you deserve time off there's nothing wrong with that but if that's if that's you you might not be the type of person that needs to start their own business because there's so much more time you're gonna be so tired you're gonna be so much involved when you first start i mean i was i'm you you were out there you if you don't have any money <laughs> like i really did when i started you're gonna be creating your own website and I had to figure out how to do that, how to figure out logos. I'm up two in the morning on uh, Adobe Illustrator, trying to make a logo and figure out the program because the program is, is very expensive and falling asleep at the computer and, and trying to, I mean, do so many different things and coming up with business cards. But I had to design my own business cards, but I didn't want trash. So I had to do a, another level and figuring these things out. It all takes time. And they ain't no eight hours. It ain't 24 because you, you don't die from lack of sleep, but this is close to staying up as much as possible as you can to get the job done. Are you willing to do that? If not, I say stay at work. That's just my opinion. But if you're willing to do it, you need to take all these five things and consider all these things in consideration. And once you're ready, hey man, it's all a gamble. People talk about guarantees, but to me just, I stayed at jobs. I stayed at jobs for years and years and years that people said were were solid. You know, that you that they had pensions and stuff. And guess what? At the end of the day, I ended up having to work extra jobs because there wasn't enough money. And it didn't even keep up with the economy. So you tell me that that's not a risk. This is a risk, but that's a risk too. So you gotta tell, ask yourself what you're willing to do. And only you know that. Only you really know that. I'm willing to stay up. I'm willing to do whatever I got to do to get this done. Are you? That's the question you got to ask yourself. So, till next time, y'all. This has been the Whiteboard Breakdown. Daryl, the finisher. Hey, comment, like, subscribe. You know, we got a lot more to do out here, man. We got a lot more conversations to have. 
and it's going to be a good time learning with each other and uh be blessed <laughs>